Okay, there, it's, it's recording now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second programming meeting. And I say second because we start counting at zero. Um, so I'll start sharing my screen um, so that we can get right into it. And we will uh, see how well my computer performs with all this. So yeah, there we go, programming. And okay, can you guys see the uh, the presentation? Should hopefully be showing. Say hopefully, very hopefully. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So uh, today we're going to be learning about objects, and this is sort of our second and hopefully last. Uh, lesson on the basics of Java before we get into robotics programming itself, which is exciting because I guess uh, we, we were able to wrap it up within three or two uh, lessons. So I hope you guys understand it and I hope I don't go too fast. Again, it will be put on our YouTube channel if you need to take reference or if you, you know, want to want to watch it again if you're confused at some point later. So programming, uh, talking specifically about objects, so how to destroy any and all RAM, also known as working with uh, objects in Java. Working in objects in Java, my English is top notch here. I had like, I have five slides total and I somehow managed to mess this up. Let's get right into it. So, making an object. Uh, if I open up my REPL.it, so if you guys could open up your REPL.it as well, um, we're just going to be using REPL to get sort of uh, all of our code written down, right? So let me just share this tab. Maybe I should just share my Chrome. I think that might be a smarter thing to do. Okay, I'll just share my Chrome instead. So give me one second as I maneuver. I swear, I've seen like, seen the laptops that are 15 year old that perform better than this. That's not sarcasm. Oh my God, no, don't full screen it. Oh, thank God, okay. Window, please. Uh, let me just share my meet. Okay, this one. Okay, so can you guys see my uh, my Chrome right now? Is it visible? Just say something. Okay, thank you, thank you. Just need to make sure. Okay, so open up your REPL.it. If you recall from last time, uh, we wrote this code and it runs, which is exciting. So let me just clear this off. Okay, perfect. So we wrote this last time, um, just working with integers and basic variables, and we got our code running. But we never really understood what these uh, these different things meant, and so it was a bit confusing because we sort of just went in blind, but we understood how to get input from the user, how to output stuff, and what the basic box type variables are, along with strings. Right, so we learned a little bit about machines or, or objects, and we call them complex Lego blocks because they use these Lego building blocks that are primitives to sort of perform different things. If you guys uh, remember that from last class, I hope you do. If you don't, then uh, it's going to be a bit of a rude awakening. But so basically, um, we 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 kind of went over that. But what really is an object, right? So like. How, how can we make our own objects? We know the strings are objects that are built into Java. We know the scanner is an object that's built into Java, but how do we make our own object? And to do that, we need to put it, in, or it's pre preferable that we put it in another file. And the reason why we put it in another file is basically, um, we, we would like everything to be organized. So all things of, uh, that relate to one different object, we want to keep in a different file. And then in the main, we only want to keep what's supposed to be running on the front end. So we don't really want all this, all of our ugly objects in the background to be put all into one file. We want it to be spread around because that's sort of how we communicate and that's how we tell the computer, oh yeah, so I want um, all this stuff to be in this place because that's where all, all the things related to this one operation, let's say it's math, or all the things related to strings will be put in one place in my computer. So it's all mainly for organization. Again, it does work if we put it in one file, but that's not neat. And so for organization, we do put things in different files and that can come into play later on when we're working with a robot. So we're going to be making a very simple sort of example uh, use case for our uh, sort of getting into classes. So we're going to make our class and we're going to make it around points. So, you know, points on a 2D grid, I think that's universal in most high school math classes. So I'm going to keep that there. So a point, right? So a point on a 2D grid, we're only going to be working with 2D right now. Maybe I should specify point 2D, but I'll just say point. So it's going to be a 2D point um, on a grid, right? So it has an X and a Y value. 
And since it has an x and a y value, we can sort of plan out our class like that. So to make a class, it's pretty simple. We sort of just specify the class keyword, right? Or, or class is basically like the design of an object, right? So class is sort of saying, oh, this is how the object is supposed to be designed. And the object is the object itself, right? So one is the design and one is the object. Uh, and so class is sort of just the design of the object. It's how we can classify it, basically. Um, and so in the class, we're going to say that this is a point. So we're going to make point type objects. So the, the type of blueprint or the type of um, sort of what we're, the structure that we're going to make is going to be called point, right? But the names of the things that we make with this design can be different, right? So I can have a point and I can call this point A, right? So if you're, if you're in math class, teachers always say, oh yeah, so there's a point A and there's a point B. In the same way, I can make, so it's already just a point on a grid. I know what it's supposed to be, but I can give it a different name. And that's the name of the uh, thing that we make with the blueprint, while well, the blueprint has a name in and of itself, which is a little bit confusing, but it's sort of like how people name their cars, right? So the model of the car and the make of the car is the actual name of the model, right? So it's kind of like what they designed it off of, but people name their car because that's just uh, their version of their car. That's their car. Um, so it's something that's built off of a blueprint, but it's their version of the blueprint. Does that make sense or, or should I explain that in an easier to understand way? Let me open up the chat. Okay. People still name their car. Uh, I, I hope, uh, assuming they do, but I hope that makes sense. And let's continue on. So we're just making sort of like the name of the blueprint here, right? So we know that a point has two values, which is the X and the Y. So, you know, the X is sort of the horizontal, the Y is the vertical. Math class. So then we're, we're going to say that these can be decimals. So we're going to call them float values. Actually, no, we'll just call them double values because we want more precision. Remember, double has more bits, which means more precision. Float has less precision. So we're going to call them a double, and we're going to call these doubles x and y. So we're going to make one double, we're going to call this double x. We're going to make another one, and we're going to call this double y. And so these are essentially going to be sort of our two main building blocks. So in the point, all you need to know is sort of the, the x position and the y position. There's not much else you really need to know about the point. Uh, so let's go back into main.java, and we, we want we want to bring this point class, just like we brought the scanner, we want to import it into here. So how do we import it? Uh, some would think, oh, maybe we just do import point, right? So they would just do import point like this. And you'll notice that there's a red squiggly line because it says, oh, syntax error. Oh, wait, there's no red squiggly line. You'll notice that when we run it, it will error. So I think that's a better way. Yeah, okay, there, see. Dot expected. So there's there's it's supposed to be there's supposed to be a dot before it, like we see here. So there's a Java dot util dot scanner. So there's a dot before it. So what dot do we put? Uh, because we don't really know where it belongs. And so to specify where it belongs, we need to say um, what package it's in. And a package is essentially how I define those. Oh, this is about strings and this is about math. It's it's how we classify where these blueprints go, right? So. Uh, Java likes to be very organized, and in that sense, we want to keep folders, and these folders essentially contain, oh, so in this folder, there are all the designs for points, right? And so we're just going to make, uh, we're going to make our own package, and we're going to say that this package is for FRC. So everything FRC related, we're going to keep on this package. And so you'll notice that there's a red squiggly line, but that'll go away, go away very quickly. Um, we just need to sort of run our code. So the red squiggly lines are a little bit inconsistent. But we just need to, oh yeah, so we, we specified our package over here, and we know that it's in the FRC package, right? And points are important in FRC because in a robot code, we want to specify points on the map, right? So it's not going to be exactly like this, but it, it can be a part of FRC. And so here, we're just going to do FRC.point because we're going to go inside of the FRC folder and find, oh, here is the blueprint for a point. I'm going to be using this in my project. And so let's try to run our code now, and we'll see what happens. You'll notice that it, if you just click the run button, it'll do everything. And you'll notice that it says point is not public in FRC, cannot be accessed from outside package. And that's going to bring us to our next point, which is, uh, wait, I think I already did this wrong. Yeah, I was supposed to make the point fully functional first. Uh, well, that's okay. You know what? We'll, we'll, we'll do that later. I'll just go in the wrong order here. So scopes. Scopes are essentially how we're going, how Java is going to uh, essentially like say, oh, this is something that um, we need everyone to see, and this is something that we need no one to see. So before, when I was explaining public and uh, private, 
I was essentially saying, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's a way that we can organize our traffic. And that's basically what it is. It's a way that we can organize w who sees what. Um, because in the main sense of things, if everyone sees everything, then that's going to be a lot of information to process. Like, uh, you can imagine it in the blueprint sort of sense. If I take all my blueprints that are in the folders and just spread them out on the table, the table's going to be filled with blueprints. It's going to be impossible to find what I'm looking for. And so we kind of want to make sure that only the relevant information is shown to the public. And so everything that we're going to keep in our package that we want our main.java to see, that we want our main.java to use, we're going to say that it's public because it, we want it to be seen. Right? And so we're going to say that this is a public class point. And the reason why we're saying it's public is because in the main.java file, they're going to look into the folder and they want to see, oh yeah, this is point, and oh yeah, I'm supposed to be able to see this. Because if they're not supposed to be able to see it, if it's supposed to be hidden, then we don't want to clutter their view. So you don't have to use public or private, or you don't have to use private, but you do have to use public because you need to make sure that some things um, the other files can see. So does that... Like, I, I didn't fully explain public and private yet. I didn't explain private. But does the public part make sense? Like, stuff that we're supposed to see? Or should I explain it a little bit better? Okay. Sounds good. Right. So, we're making our point a public class. So now, if we try to run it, you'll see that it does this. And give it a second. It'll run our code. So it'll do main, and it'll say, how old are you? Uh, well, I mean, this is our code from last time. I'll just say I'm 16 again. Oh, I'll be, wow, I, I really didn't know I'd be 21 in five years. That's incredible. But you'll see that a new folder has actually been created in our REPL. And so this folder sort of, uh, it, it goes directly off the logic I used. So Java will actually organize your classes based on their package. So within the, pa within the FRC package or the FRC folder, we'll see our point.class, which is our blueprint for our point uh, object, right? So that's sort of, uh, ties into both sides, and that's perfect because that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, great. Now that we have our point, uh, we need to come up with a use case for our point, right? So let's say that we're we're going to make a few points here, and here I'll try to explain um, sort of the difference in the points. So let me just keep our input scanner. Let me just undo that. Hold up. There we go. So I don't want to get rid of our input because I do want our input to be here, and we're just going to get rid of all of this. Perfect. Now we're going to make a new point. And so we're going to say point, and we're going to give it a name. We'll call it point A equals new. So remember how we use new? We're basically making a new object based on the blueprint that already exists. So we're going to say equals new point. You notice point is a common name, but that's just because, you know, job is weird. But um, so we made a point A, right? Uh, and we also want to make a point B. So we're going to say point. So it's basically saying, oh, this is going to be uh, a machine, and it's going to be of the type point, right? So it's sort of defining, oh, yeah, so this is going to be a car, but this is a Ferrari, and this is a Honda. Now, obviously, or a Honda Civic. If you don't know the difference between a Ferrari and a Honda Civic, it makes a huge difference. Let's say you're going to a car dealership, and you're going to buy a car, and they say, oh, yeah, these are both cars. And you ask, oh, what, what type of car are they? And they're just like, oh, they're just both cars. I mean, they're, they're just cars. Um, you need to know, you need to specify exactly what type of machine it is or what type of object it is for Java to know how much space it needs to uh, store for it, right? So it's, it's, another, it's another sort of that organizational thing. It needs to know exactly what type of object it's making. And we know that it's making a point type object, right? So the point from over here, I'm going to call this our point B. We're going to say that it's a, so we're making a new point again from our point. Perfect. And you'll notice that if we try to run this code, I'm expecting there to be errors, but I don't know for sure. There should be. If there aren't, then that's kind of weird. Okay, there aren't. That's weird. Um, yeah, so you'll notice that it makes a new point, but how do we specify the information inside of our point? How do, I, how do we say, oh, point A's x value is this, and point B's x value is this? There's no way that we can really specify what's inside of these objects. We just know that we're making an object. We don't know exactly what's going inside of it. It's a blank object, right? So we need to give some information for our point to be created. And this information is going to be where the x is and where the y is, right? And so to, to sort of plan out how this object will, will be made, or to sort of plan out the assembly of this object, we're going to use something called a constructor. And so a constructor is a pretty complicated word, but it's basically what's going to be building our object. So when we say we're making a new point, notice how I'm saying making a new point. How exactly is our computer making that new point? We, we haven't really given it a formula or a recipe to make that new point. So it just automatically make allocates the space. So it says in your computer, oh yeah, we're making 
a new point A, or we're making a new point, so give me this much space because this is how much space it's going to take up. These are how many building blocks it needs, right? So we, it needs two doubles. And it does that, it allocates the space, and it just leaves it there. It doesn't do anything with it. Um, but we need, to, we need to give it some information so it goes like, oh yeah, so this is uh, the two doubles that's allocating, and this is the data that's supposed to go on the inside. And so let's, let's gather up that. And we're going to make our constructor to sort of give our computer the formula to construct, or to, to make these points. Does that make sense to you guys? Might be speaking too fast. Slow down, try to make it better. All clear. That's one all clear. Keep going, it's good. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, perfect. So, let's make our constructor. So, to make the constructor, uh, we're going to use syntax. Remember, syntax is sort of like the language of code. We're going to use syntax that's similar to how we do this, right? And so we're basically going to say, uh, over here, we're going to say point, right? And so this is basically our constructor. We're going to say point. You're going to use your brackets over here, exactly like how we did last time, but it's not a semicolon. We're going to give it some instructions this time. And so we're going to give it, when it's making a new point, when it's, you know, constructing one, we're going to give it a few instructions. And we're going to say that in these instructions, we need a little bit of information. And what information we need is, we need our inputted, or we need the uh, the x value that we're going to get inputted. So we're going to call this input x. And we're going to need another value, and this is going to be the y that we input. And we're going to call this input y. Perfect. And so these are the x and y values that we sort of, that we um, that we give the, the builder, that we give our computer, so it puts it into our point. And so now that we have our input x and input y values, what exactly do we want to do with them? Okay, well that was a question, but it's okay, it's okay, whatever. Uh, we want to put them inside of our point. We want our x value to equal the input x, and we want our y value to equal the input y. To sort of signify, okay, yeah, so I'm making a new point, and here are the coordinates of the point. Right, and then we enter, oh yeah, it's three and four, right? So x equals three and y equals four. And so in our computer, we want it to be like, oh yeah, so within the point itself, in these building blocks, we're going to change them to be three and four, right? Because these are only coming in from the outside. So imagine sort of like um, a very simple machine, right? So we're sort of giving it some information, right? It's gonna take this information, but the boxes with the information don't stay inside of that machine, or else that machine will get infinitely larger. We want it to take the information in the boxes and then throw the boxes away. We don't want it to get infinitely larger and blow up. Uh, we, do, we do want to throw away the boxes at the end, so we're just going to take the information and we're going to leave it. We're not actually going to do anything with that information that we're getting. We're just going to take it and leave it. And so because we're taking it and leaving it, we want to take our local values, which is our local is basically what's inside of our object already, and we're going to fill them with these out, outside values. So x equals input x and y equals input y. Perfect. So now we have a new constructor. And a constructor, this is basically like one sort of recipe that our computer can use to, to make a new point. right? And so now we're going to head over here. And let's say that in our point, we're going to say that this is going to be 3.0 and this is going to be 4.0. Right? So a point with an x of 3 and a y of 4. And let's try, let's try running this code now. Let's see if there are any errors or anything happens here which I hope something does happen. I don't actually know if it will. Okay, perfect. Double, double. No new arguments. There's no, yeah, okay, perfect, there we go. So, you'll notice that point, double, double, which is basically like the, the stuff, the information that we gave it, right? So input x and input y, it's gonna abbreviate them to double, double because it doesn't know the name. It's not public in point. And you'll see that this is a bit of an error. And the reason why this is an error is because Remember, we only want stuff that's relevant to be seen from the outside. So we know that point, the class, is seen by the outside. But we don't know if the constructor or the recipe is going to be shown to the outside. And here we just realized that the recipe is not shown to the outside. And so we want to make sure that our recipe is shown to the outside. And the way that we can do that is by making this public. And we're going to say, oh yeah, now, so when you're looking into point, you'll also see attached to it on a sticky note, there's going to be a recipe, which is like, oh, when you're making a new point, you're going to take the two values that you need and you're going to put them on the inside like this. And so we're going to make that public. And now if you run it, you'll notice that it should work unless there's another error that I missed. That uh, cannot be applied to give it. Oh yeah. And now that we specified a formula, um, we can't use the old default constructor anymore. So we can't just say, oh yeah, allocate the space and leave it. We do need to specify uh, what, what goes on the inside. So we'll make this one 
1.0 and 2.0. Pretty simple. Okay, perfect. Now if you run the code. So it's basically like once we have a recipe, we can't just go back to doing nothing with it anymore. So you sort of need to use that recipe from now on. Okay, so far. Does that mean the class and the constructor need to be the same name? Yeah, so it needs to be the same syntax. Uh, and that's the language basically. So just exactly the same way we make that point over here, right? So point with the two brackets and then with the two values over here and the semicolon at the end. Instead of putting in the semicolon at the end, we're putting in new instructions. So we're going to put them in curly braces because in curly braces we put our instructions and with our uh, semicolon, we are basically just ending that line. But with our curly braces, we're giving it instructions. So when it has that information, we want it to do something. And we're just saying what that something is. Does that help? Someone just left the meeting. It's very uh, comforting, I guess. Okay. Okay, well, well, I hope that helped. Um, I will continue going. Okay, perfect. So now that we've made our points, and now that they have an x and a y value, uh, how exactly do we work with those x and y values? We haven't really gone into that. We just made these points. These points just exist, but we don't really know what to do with the points yet. Uh, we just know that they exist. So let's let's try to use these points. Uh, let's say that we want to get the x uh, value of our point A. Um, so let's say we're just going to print that out. System.out.println, and we want to print out the x value of our point A. Well, how do we do that? Uh, what if we just do point A? If we just try to print point A, what, what happens? Um, and if we try to run this code, you'll see that uh, some interesting stuff happens. It's basically going to do this. And this is so confusing. frc.point at 7229724f. Well, what does that even mean? Are you speaking an alien language? And the answer is not an alien language, it's speaking computer language. And the reason why this looks so weird is basically what it's saying is, this is an FRC point object, and remember how I said it allocates space, so it says, oh yeah, we're going to get two doubles and we're going to put them somewhere. Uh, where is that somewhere? And that somewhere is an address on your RAM. So remember at the start of the presentation when I said, destroy your RAM? Well yeah, Java uses a lot of RAM, and the reason it does that is because it stores all your objects directly onto the RAM at a certain address, and that address is essentially just a special computerized digit on your RAM, and it says, oh yeah, so within this block in your RAM, you will find this one frc.point object. And so that's sort of what it says. But this is not giving us any information. Um, I just wanted the x value of point A. I didn't want the address of it. So how, how exactly do I work with that? And you'll notice that the way that we can work with that is the same way that we use these sort of folders. We'll just use a dot. And this dot will essentially give us a little bit more information on what's on the inside of our point. So you'll notice that we haven't even made this stuff, but they just come in default. And the reason they come in default is basically all Java objects need these, all Java machines, or all Java blueprints have these sort of built into them because they're, they're very important uh, for them to function, right? So equals, well, R2 things equals. We, we can specify it by ourselves, um, which, we, which I'll show you guys how to do later, but these are sort of just built in and, and they explain how to do it. So we'll, you'll also notice there are two building blocks, which are also signified by these blocks in REPL.it. X and Y are also present. So if we want to get our X value, if we just do point A dot X, which is going to get our X from point A, and we just try to run it, you'll see that it will print out our x value of point A. And you'll see that there's another error here. Oh my god. And you'll see that this is very similar to the previous errors that we've had, which is x is not public in point, cannot be accessed from outside packet. Um, and now it also brings up the point of we've made these building blocks inside of our point, but we're not showing them to the public. Shouldn't we be showing these to the public? And the thing is, yeah, everyone should be able to see these x and the y because we're going to be working directly with the x and the y. Um, or, or will we? Is it smart to work directly with the x and the y? Isn't that thousands of blocks that we're showing to the people? Shouldn't we make it a little bit easier for the people to see our x and y instead of having to go inside of our point and looking directly at each block? And the answer is yes, yes, we should make it a little bit easier. And so now we're going to get into our next point, or I guess our previous point here, which is functions. So are you guys clear so far about using the point.a and the public stuff? Okay. Will this space in RAM auto-delete? Yeah, so when your Java finishes running, it will uh, delete it basically automatically. It doesn't 
take up your ram forever. <laughs> that's a uh, it, it, that's um, very damaging. You only have about eight gigabytes. You don't really want to waste that. So once your Java program is done and it terminates, a uh, part of the termination process is deleting all that stuff out of your RAM, and clearing it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna take Vivex. Yeah, is everyone's yeah. Okay. Let's get right into it. So functions. Functions are basically mechanisms inside of our machine, right? So if we uh, if we go back to the car sort of example, right, where we're talking about cars. Cars have many mechanisms inside of them. You have the gear change mechanism, you have the climate control mechanism, you have the seat pull back mechanism, and, and a lot of things that just sort of work together within the car to do different things, right? So if, if, it's, if you're sitting in the passenger seat and you're like, I'm tired, well, when you're tired, what mechanism are you gonna use? You're gonna pull back your seat. And so you push the lever and that'll move your seat back. And that's sort of just one mechanism inside of your car machine. And within the machines that are in your code, you can also have more mechanisms. And so remember, when we're making a mechanism, we want to make sure that they're public because we want everyone to be able to use them. We don't want just um, just the point to be using them unless it's some sort of a, a private function. But we'll, we'll talk about this later. But we want to make sure that for most functions that everyone else can see them if they should be able to. So if we head over and we make a public thing, now we can get over to uh, the, the next part of our function declaration, which is going to be our return type. And so a return type may sound a little bit weird. Why are we returning something? Um, I, I mean, like, what, what's the point of a function? Like, what is this return type thing that we're supposed to be adding? What is a type? What are, like, what, what do you mean? And so basically, a return type is how our machine will give that feedback back to us, right? So after it's completed a job, let's say it is pulling back your seat, after you've done your thing, it's supposed to give something back to you. Right? And so what it gives back to you is sort of your own confirmation that the seat has been pulled back. Uh, and you'll notice that if you pull back your lever too much, or at least in my car, if you pull back your lever too much, it'll start, um, it'll just stop, right? And if you pull back your seat too much, it'll also stop moving. So it needs to give some information, or the mechanism needs to give some information back to the user uh, as sort of a result of that function. And some of them just don't have something, right? So if you like click something on your phone, um, then you'll notice that there is visual feedback. You'll see that maybe a button lights up. Or sometimes if you just randomly tap on your screen, nothing will happen. Uh, but it might still do something. You might not get visual feedback, but it might still do something. And that means it returns nothing. Um, and so when it returns nothing, there's a special type that we can give to it, which is void. And void is not, it's not a primitive, but it is a primitive. It's essentially something that doesn't exist. So it's saying that it returns nothing. Or that will that it will do nothing, um, and that's basically what void is. But we're not using void here. We want to return what's on the inside or what's our value of x. And so to return our value of x, we know what type our value of x is, right? So we know what our return type is. And that's going to be our double because we know that x is a double. So we will be returning a double in this situation. Then after that, we need the name of our function. And so the name of our of our function or our mechanism is essentially how other people will access it. They'll be like, oh yeah, I want to move that seat lever. Well, they know what the seat lever is because they know what it looks like. But in your code, you don't really have a lot of visuals, you have a lot of text. So you need to give it a name, something that the compiler can go like, oh yeah, so this is what this is the mechanism that he's looking for. And so we'll give our mechanism a name, we'll call it get x. And do we need any information to get our x value? Do we need to provide any information? No, we just want to get our x value, it's clean and simple. We don't want to give any more information we just want to get our x value. And so now that we do that, we're going to give some instructions. So remember, curly braces, you're, you always put instructions inside of curly braces. So to go over the syntax again, public, we want everyone to see our function and to use it. Double, our return type, what our function will be giving back. It can give back nothing, but it can also give back something. So we want to make sure that we know what we're giving back. The name of the function, which is, you know, it can be any name, just make sure there are no spaces in it our parameters, so any information that the function needs to know before it works, right? So if we're adding two numbers, then we might do, uh, we might need to put in the two numbers because that's the information, that's what we're adding. And then we're going to return whatever the sum of it is, right? So if we're adding two ints, we're going to be returning an int and our two parameters will be two ints, right? And so, and then the curly braces to put our instructions on the inside. Does that sound good to you guys? Is it going too fast? Too slow, too fast, good pace, makes sense. Thank you. All good, okay. 
Okay, okay, sounds good. So now that we have confirmed our sort of function syntax, uh, we need to return our x value. And so that brings us to our next keyword, which is return. Wow, the return, 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 return. So return, wow, that's sort of basically English. And so what return does is it's sort of giving something back. So let's say that we're adding two numbers. Let's say that's just a good uh, example function. So since this is an example function, we don't want the world to know about it. We just want to know about it. So we're not going to make it public, but it will exist. So we're going to say that this is add. We're going to add two numbers here. So we're going to say int uh, number one. And we're going to make another int and we're going to call this number two. And so now we're going to give some instructions, right? So now that we've, we have our two numbers, we want to give some instructions back. And so to give the instructions, we're basically going to say, oh yeah, so I want you to return something. And what, what I want you to return is the sum of these two numbers. So we'll just return, right, English, and then we'll return the sum of the two numbers, which we can just use it, uh, an addition sign for. So number one plus number two. And once we do this, you'll notice that it's basically done. So we do a little bit of calculation. And after we do our calculation, we're going to return what we calculated. So returning is basically giving something back. And so once you give something back, you can't do anything after that. Your function is basically done. Uh, and so what that means is, let's say I return number one plus number two, but this is supposed to be uh, add and subtract. Um, and so let's say I do add and subtract. So I change the name of the function. Oh, this is not Python, this is JavaScript. I'll change the, the naming scheme of this. Okay, so add and subtract. And let's say that we're supposed to add number one and number two, and after they've been added, we're supposed to subtract number three. And we wanna, we wanna do that, right? So uh, an intelligent person might just do this, but intelligence is overrated, so we're just going to do it the hard way. And so a normal person might think, oh yeah, okay, so return number one plus number two, we're returning that. And then we also wanna return number one plus number two minus number three. And so they just do this, they, they add one on the bottom and they're like number one plus number two minus number three. I added a space, apologize for that. And so while this seems like it would work, once you return a value, your function is over. You're not doing anything else anymore um, because it's essentially done its job. It's like, oh yeah, so I move my lever back like a certain amount. I'm done. I'm, the lever is not going to kick me back for moving it or touching it. It's just done. It's done doing its job, and I'm done doing my job. And so that's why once that's a pretty important thing to understand. That that's basically once you return something, your function is over. That's the purpose of your function. You are done. And so another question becomes, oh yeah, but what if we're doing void, right? So in void, what if we want to end our function? And so in void, you're not returning anything. And so because you're not return any, returning anything, if you just do return with the semicolon next to it, you're essentially, um, yeah, it is returning a void, okay. Oh, oops, this capital V, that's fine. So when you say return like this, you're basically saying, oh yeah, you're returning nothing, but the function is over now. So return is just another handy way you can say, oh yeah, the function is over, but it's also a way you can give information back uh, about what your function has done. So let's just, uh, let's wrap this up. So double get x, we're going to return our value of x. And we're going to do the same thing for our y value over here. So I suggest you guys do that by yourself. Uh, and you know, it's pretty simple, I hope. And we're going to return our y, y, y value. Okay, perfect. So we've gotten our get x and get y. Is this clear to you guys? Does this make sense? The sort of function stuff and... I don't know what else I did. I think it was just return. Yeah, return. Does return make sense to you guys? Nice. How do you even send emojis in this? I, I have no idea, to be perfectly honest. Okay, well, that's off topic. Let's move back here. So instead of doing dot x, which didn't work, if we just do dot get x, you'll notice that when we run our code now, it will. Dun dun dun. Dun, 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 dun. It'll work. Wow, yeah, 3.0. That's our x value over here. Perfect. So now that we can get our x and we can get both of them, we also want to find a way to set our x, right? Because we already know how to get it, right? That's pretty easy. We just get our x value over here. We just return it. But now we want to be able to set our x value. So because we're setting our x value, what uh, return type do you think it should have? Because we're just going to set it. We don't want to do anything else. We just want to set a new value to it.
What type of return type do you think would make the most sense if we're just going to set a value? That's just the job, nothing else, just setting a value. Void, yeah, perfect, yeah. So the, um, the return type that we want to keep here is a void return type. And the reason why we want to keep a void return type is we're not returning anything, we're just setting a value. Um, and so we want to set our x to another value. And the way we can do that is pretty simple, so we're going to make this a public function because we want it to be set from anywhere else. Again, if we wanted to set it inside of our class, we could very simply do x equals 4 or something. And that'll very simply set our value. But we don't want to do point a dot x equals 4 because then that's going to clutter our workspace. So we use these sets and gets to very simply modify our uh, code or modify everything without making everything cluttered and getting a thousand building blocks littered all over your table. Imagine like your desk filled with Lego blocks because you're trying to work on something. That's disgusting. So we're going to make this void and we're going to call our function set to x. And do you think we need any information? Inside inside of our function to make it work, do you think we need uh, we need something from the outside so that our function can uh, work properly, or do you think we don't need anything from the outside and we can just set x? Thank you, Rohan. Yes, you need a value to set it to, right? You can't just set x to some random number, we want to make sure that we set it to whatever number we specify on the outside. We want to make sure that we send some information to it that specifies exactly what we want um, to go inside of x, or what we want x to be equal to. So we're going to call this double value, because remember, x is also double, so we need to make sure that this parameter is the same type, and we're going to call this input x again. And we're basically going to make our function, we're going to say x equals input x. And remember what I said about doing return like this? Well, if you have a return type over here, like this, if I get rid of this line, if I get rid of return y, you'll notice that hopefully a squiggly line pops up. I think it does. Maybe it might not. Typically, a squiggly line or an error does pop up because you need to return something at the end of it because it's, ex it's expecting you to give something back, right? So we want to make sure that we give something back over here, but in our void functions, we're not giving anything back. It's, uh, we're giving nothing back. And because you're giving nothing back, you don't need to add this return line over here. You can just leave it empty at the end. You don't need anything. And so we've set our public uh, void set x. Now we're going to make a public void for our set y. So again, same very simple code. We're going to make double input y. And we're going to drag this over here. And we're going to go y equals input y. Perfect. Uh, now let me just run through what else I have on my presentation. Working with objects, compiling. Okay, yeah, that was good. So yeah, we still have to do the rest of it, which is the working with functions bit, but we're good to go. Okay, now we're able to set our x, set our y, we're able to get our x and get our y, and I think that our point function is complete, so we have our points, um, right? But there's a little bit more that's missing, and that's going to be our point overview. Again, so let's, let's try to get our point overview. If you just want to get our information on our point A, if we just want to get our x and our y values and all the other information, if we just do uh, system.out.println a, if we try to run it, you're 100% sure you're, you've seen this output before, you remember it, it's just going to output uh, frc.point at address. And that's really confusing, like why is it just giving me an address again? Like I want some information, I want to know exactly what points are inside of my thing. And so to get the points, there's actually a special built-in function. Um, and this built-in function is what automatically happens when you do this. Uh, System.out.println, the thing that automatically happens. So instead of it just doing point A, it's going to do point A dot two string, which turns it into a string. And you'll notice that point A dot two string is actually built in. And so we can modify, we can modify it so that it works a little bit better and it gives us more information about what's inside of our point. And so to do that, we're going to head up to the top so that we don't, you know, so everything important remains at the top and the other functions we make remain at the bottom. We want this to be public because you want it to be accessed by things that are not inside of point.java, we want it to be accessed by everywhere, so it's going to be public, and we're going to say that this is our, uh, what should we call, toString method. So, uh, do you think that this should be a return type to toString? And if so, what should that return type be? I think it's uh, fairly obvious by the name. What should the return type be? What, what should I be uh, expecting to return? A string. Wow. Really? You, you think two string returns an integer or something? 
<laughs> I'm joking. String, yeah, perfect. So we want to return a string. Our toString function will return a string, which is the string representation of our object. So this is basically a way in our text that we can see what a uh, point is, and we can get more information about it without it looking like frc.point at blah blah blah. And so since we're returning a string, we're just going to do our return statement over here, and we're going to return, very basically, just a simple math syntax of this. We're going to return our this over here, we're going to return our x value, and then, uh, oh, it's not a comma, it's a plus. So we're going to add all these strings together. So we're going to do this, plus this, and then we're going to do plus comma, and we're going to add a space, we're going to add our y, and then we're going to add another one, which is our closing bracket. Oh, no, that's the wrong thing. Uh, closing bracket. And so this is supposed to look something like uh, x and y, like this. Um, and so that's kind of what we're going to try to do with our two string. And so if we try to run our code now, uh, we'll see how that turns out, if it turns out at all. I think it does. They really changed Java. I think they made it a little bit better. Perfect. Yeah, they did. Yeah, so you'll see that um, it'll do 3.0. Uh, with a comma and then 4.0 and then it ends off with the curly brace at the end. So this gives us a little bit more information about our uh, point and what's on the inside of our point, which is great, which is perfect. Uh, now we're good to go. But you know, this is quite a useless point. So we've, we've got our two points, but how are we actually going to do any math with these points? They're just, they just exist. If we want to do any math with them, we have to take the point A dot get X plus point B dot get X and it's going to be so much effort and lots of work. So how can, like, I think we want to add a, little, a few more functions in here to sort of get that, uh, get that math aspect of it, right? And when you have two points, the most uh, common question asked is, oh yeah, what's the distance between the two points, right? Because that's, uh, that's a very common question asked, and it's a also pretty common, um, what you call mathematics question? I think, yeah, that, that works. Mathematics problem, mathematics question, it pops up a lot in grade 10. So for those of you in grade 9, this is, I guess, future practice, future prep. And so the distance between two points, um, do you think that should be returned as, what, what return type do you think should be um, the distance between two points? Should it be uh, an integer? Should it be a sh uh, character? Should it be a string? Like what, what do you think it should be returning? What do you think should be re the return type of the distance? A double, yeah, perfect, yeah. So we wanna return a double, um, and that's, ba that's basically going to be the distance between one point and another point. So speaking of another point, do you think there's some other information we need to know within that one point so that we can get the distance? So if we know that we're in point A right now, so if we know that this is the blueprint for point A, is there some other information we need to know to get the distance to another point? Is there something we're missing here in the formula? Is there a parameter possibly that we need so that we can get the distance from our current point to another point? I'll leave you to think about that. The values of the other point, perfect, yeah. So instead of making it the values of the other point, we can very simply just make it another point uh, in and of itself. So parameters don't have to be boxes, parameters can be other machines. Uh, and so instead of actually shipping another machine to another machine, because that's going to be a lot of manpower, what it does is remember that address, the 727 blah 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 at F whatever, that address is basically, what, what it's going to do is one machine will go to the other address, and then they're going to interact together. So all you're going to be sending over is that address. But that address is very important, because that's how we can uh, reference another point or another machine and give it as a parameter. So. We're going to do that, and we're going to make this a uh, public double. We're going to call our distance. And we're going to make our distance, and we're going to say that it's between our point and another one. And so this is essentially going to be, uh, we're going to make another point, and we're going to call this our other point. Perfect. So this is also going to go into the other aspect of the class that I wanted to talk about. And so now we have our other point, and we have our current point. So what information do you think there is in the that there is within the other point that we need uh, to calculate with our point? That makes no sense. What values of the other point do we need um, so that we can get the distance? Like wh what is within that other point that helps us find the distance? The x and the y. Yeah, exactly. So um, we we know that we have uh, this current point. We know that we have its x and y, and so that's x and y like this, right? But we also want to get our x and y from the other one. 
And so the way that we can get the x and y from the other one is essentially by making two doubles. And we're going to call this other x. And we're going to say that this is equal to other point dot. So how do we get the x from another point? Do you guys remember? There's a certain special thing, get the x. There's a, it's a little special function we made a while ago that helps us get the x value very easily, might I add. We made it, not input x, no, no, no. We, it's, a, it's a mechanism, it's a function on the inside. Yes, get x. So there's a certain mechanism we made on the inside so that we can get the x value. Now you might be thinking, oh, why, why are we using get x? Can we just use x like this? And it might look correct, but it actually is not correct. Because remember, it needs to be public. And so we need the other point to be able to see it. And so we need to do other, uh, other point dot get x. So it does work if you do it the other way, but please don't do it the other way. <laughs> and then now we're going to make our other y equals other point. Oh my god. Uh, other point dot get, and then we're going to say y. Perfect. So I do want you guys to sort of follow along. So I'll give you some time to get this uh, get this written down. Just this one function. If you don't, I mean, okay, well, you should have gone the, gotten the rest of it done. I will post it. Uh, but I mean, if, if it would be nice if you could just get that done. You know what? Actually, it's fine. Whatever. It's fine. It's okay. I don't mind. Okay. Imagine using anything besides Python. I am in support for Java for FRC despite Java being trash. Okay, well, thank you, Armand. Okay, now that we have our um, other x and other y, I hope you guys remember the formula um, for distance because that's what we're going to be using and that's the value that we're going to return. And so the formula for the distance is basically going to be the square root, which I will abbreviate to squirt. Uh, it's a horrible way to abbreviate it. And then it's going to be our x1 minus x2 uh, squared. And then it's going to be our y1 minus y2 uh, squared. And so, again, your y1 might be smaller than your y2, but basics of, uh, of what are these called, Ex exponents, yeah, if you have, uh, so let's say you have negative 4, negative 4 to the power of 2, that's going to be negative 4 times negative 4, which is equal to 16. So 4, times, 4, 4 to the power of 2 and negative 4 to the power of 2 are equal to the same thing. So in that sense, um, we can we don't have to do uh, we don't have to do any if checking to make sure that one is larger than the other. We can just do one minus the other, and it works regardless. And so now you'll notice that we come to a little bit of a halt. How do we get the square root of something, and how do we get the exponent of something? We never really looked into that within Java, and so there's a way that we can do it, and that's actually by using our math library. And so to use our math library, we're going to go over here, and we're going to do import Java. Dot, I think it's math. Yeah, it's math. Dot uh, this exponent or this asterisk thingy. And so remember, the asterisk thingy will import everything from it, or we can just do it step by step. So we need the square root. Uh, I actually don't remember what it is. Is it dot math? Dot math. Math context. Oh, it might be Java dot lang dot math. Maybe I'm just, yeah, okay, it is. It's java.lang.math. It's not java.math. It's just java.lang.math. And so you need to import java.lang.math. And so this is going to contain all of our math functions that we're going to use. And so we want to return something. What we're going to return is going to be our square root of, so again, square root. And it's going to be the square root of a double, which is perfect. And it also returns a double, which is even perfecter. And then now we want to add um, our two values subtracted by each other, right? So we're, we need to get the exponent of them. And so to get the exponent, we're going to do math.pow. And so pow essentially means to the power of, right? And so we're going to do uh, x or rx minus other x. And we want to do this to the power of 2. And we also want to add this to, so we're going to do math.pow. We're going to do uh, y minus other y to the power of 2. Perfect. And so now that we have this, I think this function will work based on the formula that we have written over here, because it's basically the same thing as this, but we're going to use, we use our math functions to sort of uh, get it completed. So do the math functions sort of make sense to you guys, or is it very confusing? Okay, thank you, Armand. 
So I know the math thing is going to be a little bit confusing, especially if you're not used to doing math and, uh, you know, programming, but uh, it's basically squirt is the, is, the squirt is the square root, pow is to the power of, so we're doing x minus other x to the power of 2, and we're doing y minus other y to the power of 2. So let's put this to the test, um, and we're going to put it to the test by doing a little bit of a distance calculation calculator thing. And so we're going to make this, uh, we're going to make a very simple calculator very quickly. So we're going to say that this, the, actually no, maybe I'll leave this to you guys. Uh, because we have about four minutes left, so I'll leave this up for questioning time. And we'll have a little bit of a homework, a whole assignment, which is going to be, you guys share your REPLs, I'll make a classroom assignment. You guys share your REPLs, and uh, on the classroom assignment as your, I guess, submission. And there I will check, um, I will check to see if you made your calculator, you know, work, and if it works well. And uh, yeah, so basically what the calculator is supposed to do is, I'll show you a little bit of a sample input just at the end of this. So make sure if you're on a video, if, if you're on the call right now, make sure you just check out the video because it'll have the physical version of it. So it's going to ask for the Y first. Here, let me just make this a big comment. So it's going to ask for, oh yeah, okay. So uh, point A X, and then here you enter in uh, your X value, right? And here's going to be point A, oh, maybe I should do like point A with like a line here. You don't have to format it like I do, just sort of similar. And they're going to do point A, Y value, and you're going to ask for their thing. And they input some value over here. And then you're going to do point B, X value. And then you're going to do point B, Y value. And then you're going to print out the answer, uh, which is going to be the distance between point A and point B is and then your distance value, right? So whatever your distance value is, you just put it over there. So, oh, wrong thing. Does that make sense to you guys? Is that good? To find the slope. Yeah, the slope would also be a good one. Um, I think that also fits more with grade nine, but you know, whatever. Grade nine math is overrated. You guys should learn about distance. It's more fun. So does that make sense to you guys? Are we good to go? Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask the questions now. Other than that, I think we are good to end the meeting. So you guys can leave if you want to. If you have any questions, you can stick around and ask them. If you have any comments about how this was really difficult and I should make it better, I will make it better. And Armand is insisting that this be the last Java lesson, but there's a little bit more that I really wanted to go through with you guys. So I'll ask you guys, do you think that there should be one more Java lesson so that we can sort of review and do better with our Java skills? Or do you think that we should jump right into robotics programming? Which one do you guys feel more comfortable with? Because in the end, this is about you guys and not us. Yes to uh, jumping into robotics. Oh, one more Java. Okay. And don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Okay. And Aditya, do you uh, do you agree with the sentiment of one more Java, or do you agree with the sentiment of no more Java? Uh, sure. Why not? Actually, okay. Actually is a great answer. Sure, why not have one more? Okay, we're, we're going for one more over here. It's very interesting. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, I don't care. Okay, well, not caring is significant. So for the people who do care, and the people who this is new for, I hope you have not fallen asleep, um, would you like one more lesson in Java? Because I'm perfectly open to doing that. Or would you like to jump right into robotics program, which is going to take a little bit longer. Not a little bit, it's going to take very long and lots of pain. And it's good though, it's robotics. Jump right into robotics programming. Robotics, okay. Damn, okay. Getting a lot of robotics statements here. <laughs> that is the least convincing argument I've ever heard. But okay, whatever. If you guys are excited to go right into robotics, then we can do that. Um, and I'll try to get the rest of the tools set up on my end as well. So, exciting news. It is four. You guys can leave if you want to. Uh, and I will end my recording. Which I think I actually have to like, physically stop recording here.